When Sharon first called me and said, I'm thinking about this job at public justice. Do you think I should pursue it? I breathed a huge sigh of relief and I said, yes, please. We needed somebody who was going to be able to articulate the mission of public justice in a compelling way. And in my mind, somebody who really understood litigation, understood the application of the law to advance the greater good. I have, over the course of my career, been very fortunate to always feel as though I've been able to use my talents in service of my values um, and to create the world that I want to live in and now as a parent, the, the world that I want to leave to my kids. My wife and I met uh, in the trenches of LGBT advocacy work. Uh, she was fighting Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and I was a lawyer at the ACLU, so we were love forged in the movement, so to speak. And we now live in Maryland with our two wonderful daughters, Sadie and Shia. And I think the thing that really speaks to me and speaks to people when I talk about public justice is that this is an organization that is there to ensure that whether it is corporations or the government or that really nefarious combination of the two is not able to run roughshod over people. And so public justice and the network of incredible trial lawyers that are part of this family are the ones that actually make sure that commitments on paper and rights on paper and protections on paper actually translate into meaningful protection in people's lives. So I grew up in Queens, New York, uh, the middle child of four. Because my father was a police officer, there was always sort of the law and order kind of vibe going on in the house. He was the order and I liked the law part better. But I think when I went to undergraduate at the University of Virginia and was studying government and foreign affairs, I was really fascinated with constitutional law. My constitutional law class was the thing that really just kind of sparked this idea in my mind that this was really the path that I wanted to walk down to use the law to indicate rights to actually sort of make our country into this more perfect union and that, that put me on the path. Working at the Department of Justice is a really sort of one of those points of your career path that you didn't really expect that you would take. Being able to be one of the voices from the inside that really called the question within the Justice Department about why were we defending the Defense of Marriage Act? It was one of those moments where you like to think you could be part of making that kind of change, but to actually see it play out uh, was really overwhelming. And then of course 2016 happened, and I would say it wasn't even as much Donald Trump being elected president, but it was Jeff Sessions being nominated as Attorney General, and I was like, Oh, <laughs> I'll show myself out, thanks very much. So literally, it was whatever day it was in February, Jeff Sessions and his entourage entered stage left, and I left stage right, um, and was very fortunate to be able to take all the knowledge that I had built and the connections that I'd built and then use that to help establish Lambda Legal's first Washington, D.C. office and, and then engage in that combination of litigation and policy advocacy to kind of hold back uh, what we knew was coming with the Trump Sessions administration. Our, our next witness is Sharon McGowan, who's the Chief Strategy Officer and Legal Director of Lambda Legal. Tucker, this isn't a fight about transgender people and having surgery. This is about transgender Americans who want to serve, who no, are willing no, to I, take I, a I'm bullet. asking you Tucker, a these sincere are question. Can you please do me the honor of our country? No, no, no. I came up the ranks as a litigator, and I love the fact that public justice is among the creme de la creme of litigators in the country, and yet we also put that litigation into a larger context of advocacy. Being able to spend the time with Sharon and to see her um, talking about public justice and the public justice mission, it became clear to me that I thought she would be a, a very effective ambassador for public justice. And one of the things that struck me is that I feel others inspired by her, and I feel a sense of excitement from staff and from others around her, board members, about her. She will be traveling the country and meeting with our members, who are such important partners to the organization and the work that we do, and talking to them about how we can deepen that partnership. 
I already got my bags packed and I'm ready to hit the road and looking forward to meeting people where they are, learning about their legal practices, learning about their legal communities, um, and sharing the good news about public justice. I would love to see the organization continue to grow and to thrive. I think that Sharon is an absolutely brilliant and terrific and inspiring leader, and I think she's going to be incredibly successful. When I saw that Paul was um, going to be passing the baton, you know, at first I didn't even think that it would necessarily be something um, that I would be able to to take on. But I'm certainly up for the up for the challenge, uh, and I will hopefully every day uh, make the organization proud.